plastic surgery, actually, to keep them looking young. So in today's personal story, we follow Albert, a young dad who wanted to change up his looks. When I'm walking down the street, I feel like people are looking at me. Just this little gall in here that really bothers me whenever I uh, get a glimpse of it. <laughs> the lines on my forehead and the double chin. I know in real life it might not be as bad, but it, if you take a look at pictures, you can really, really tell. I'm gonna get rid of it. Look at you with the fish. <laughs> oh, no, 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 put that away. My dad's gonna be doing a procedure to fix his chin, so he doesn't have um, the fat sticking out. <laughs> I think the uh, day after, you know, taking care of it. The bruising, swelling, things like that. That's, I think, to be expected. Or otherwise, I'm really, really excited for him, so. This is an example of how my chin used to be. I'm getting older, and I feel that I need a little bit of a change, and just to bring my self-esteem a little bit more up. I decided to go see a specialist. Well, he's gonna be doing a, what's called a smart lipo. I know I've heard in the past, though, it's only women that are doing these kind of things, but I don't think that's right. A lot of men are going through these procedures today to better themselves, to look better, to look younger, to feel better about themselves. So I don't see anything wrong with it. I'm scared, but I'm not gonna let that stop me. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. I'm gonna see Dr. Mulholland for 11. If you just want to have a seat, I'll let him know that you're here. Thank you. I just want it to be over. I'm okay. Just not trying not to think about it. What we're doing today is very common in men, which is treating a double chin. He's got a lot of lines, worry lines, and he's lost a little bit of his, uh, of his under eye fat, so he's starting to look a little tired. Now I'm going to do a little bit under the skin. We're going to freeze the fat. Almost done here, Albert. You're doing beautifully. So I'm going to be um, melting and removing uh, the fat and tightening the skin under your chin. I'm using a little uh, tiny fiber optic uh, laser here. You can see the red beam. And that's going to be melting the fat and tightening the skin while we do this. So this is so far a lot easier than you thought it would be. Yeah. Now we're going to phase two, which is removing some of that melted fat. Okay, Albert, you're doing great. We're almost finished. I'm loving the contour here. Have you told many people about your procedure? No, only about them. Women are more and more forthright about their cosmetic procedures. With men, still very hush-hush, very taboo. Whatever they've achieved, they achieve through hard work and through their own determination and not through some sort of sissy plastic surgery procedure. I put a little bit of filler right here to give you a little less tired look. Relax. I'm going to do a little bit of Botox now. Very tiny needle. Goes, this Botox gets into the muscle in about three hours. Now we're going to do your worry lines at the top of the forehead here. I think you can see already the nice improvement in Albert's neckline. The recovery is pretty quick. There's a little swelling, little bruising. The risks are low, but any time we use any type of laser light device, there's a risk of irregularity, asymmetry, um, not having good skin tone and loose skin, or um, a little burn where there may be excess heat. We have very much a culture of youth and beauty that is uh, particularly um, focused on women. Uh, when I first started over a decade ago, I might see one or two guys a year. Now, about 20% of my clients are men. I feel relieved that it's over. So oh, it'll all go with. You have a boo -boo under here. Yeah, a little one. Joining us in studio now is Albert's cosmetic plastic surgeon, Dr. Stephen Mulholland. Thanks for being here. Thank nice you very to much. see you again. Thank you for How's Albert me. doing? He's doing great. Uh, his recovery was less than a week, which uh, most guys want to get back to who they are very quickly. Of course. Uh, very little pain and discomfort. Guys are very wimpy when it comes to pain and they discomfort. They are more than women? Oh, absolutely. I That's think we're funny. genetically hardwired to you know, take a, a woolly mammoth's tusk to the abdomen or a shotgun blast to the leg, but don't give me a little flick or a little needle. That's way too much. <laughs> <laughs> Where women are more conditioned culturally and certainly as, as mothers and, uh, of children to, to and, you know, hair removal and uh, uh, waxing. and uh, They're just subject to more discomfort to look their best. Guys have not been attuned to that. We're, we're just tougher. Uh, we're just tougher. That just genetically say tougher. It. It's all good. It's yeah. all good. Okay, I think we have some before and afters mm -hmm. yeah. of Albert. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today. He had a personal emergency. So he was looking a little droopy, a little angry. He still looked good for his age, but uh, guys very much about a tight jawline. They want to look, you know, good in the boardroom and good in the bedroom. And three or four yes. 
<laughs> three and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And so three or four chins generally bothers the guy. They want that Newt Rockney, Clint Eastwood type of jaw. John Ham. Right. And so, so he just had a little smart lipo of his jawline to improve his jawline. Nothing severe. Something he'd done at a local anesthesia. Yeah, no, yeah. we saw he was uh, totally awake mm -hmm. through the whole thing, and you were chatting with him. And he was a bit angry it. looking. He looked malevolent. His forehead was dangerous looking, and he's a friendly guy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, when you say recovery, mm -hmm. back to work when? Oh, he was back to work within two, three days. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so he, did he have to wear that brace around Over his head the weekend. for long? So a lot of guys do this on a Thursday night or Friday <laughs> morning back on a Monday. Wow. That's very common. Yeah. Okay, and is yeah. he happy with the results? I think he's very happy. Uh, when I saw him about a month after, he says really changed his disposition. He didn't, you know, he's in a job where he has to sell himself, and he's looking angry and sort of dangerous. And so it's given him a stronger job, but a, a more approachable looking brow, because guys often look very frowny and dangerous. And if you're a lawyer or a judge, that's great. But if you're a sales guy, that's not. No, a great you want to be Mr. Friendly. Yeah, right. those kids weren't scared of him, which is nice. Right. That's yeah. uh, you know, that's good. Yeah. You said a little bit of bruising, and and was he in a lot of pain? Like, no, did you have to take painkillers. Like no, that? a lot of people think. About but lipo and they think yeah, they've all seen some episode of nip tuck where there's this crazy thing going very yeah. aggressively well, you, brought, you. you brought the I little did. teeny tiny yeah. in didn't you yeah. this is um this is the um would be the smart lipo probe it's a little laser filament about 600 microns hmm. and that little filament goes very gently back and forth in the fat and it melts you think of a, a, a chunk of butter it melts the butter and then taking out that melted butter is butter is much simpler so you than just put a little suction in there and exactly, take it all out rather than trying to extract the whole block is which it, is what was done historically correct Historically, liposuction was mechanically breaking up the fat, removing it. Now we do a two-stage process. We use an energy system, like smart lipo laser, to melt it. And then the extraction is really easy. That means almost no pain, bruising, or downtime. All right. We have lots more to talk about with male plastic cosmetic surgery when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Doctor in the House. You know, it's not just women heading under the knife for the beauty anymore. Cosmetic plastic surgeon Dr. Stephen Mulholland is back with more on what men are looking to change. So when they come into your office, what are the most common things men want to change about themselves? Yeah. 11 years ago when I started, I saw one guy the entire year. Last year, I did about 130 little facial lift procedures. 30 of them were in men. Really? Shows you the huge transition in the practice. What do they come in for? Guys come in because they lose their maleness. So a strong chin. They come in for little neck lifts and right. smart lipos like Albert. Uh -huh. or they come in like a five-minute nose job? What's that? Yeah, okay. So they come in for, for bags under the eyes or a nose that's starting to fall or it's, it's too droopy. Like this guy? Like this gentleman. You know, he doesn't want to do a nose job, but we can, through some of the injectable products like rest or perline in five minutes, I can give them a stronger nose. Seriously, that's mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah, that's a very popular procedure uh, for guys that find when they smile, their tip is touching their upper lip. With right. Age, it's was he awake for that? Uh, he was awake. That's under local anesthesia. Local anesthesia. Everything you're going to see today, in fact, is can be done under local anesthesia. Okay. What about eyelids? Eyelids one. very common. You look droopy. You look tired. Tired. Yeah. And he just looks alive, a little more awake, and a very simple thing to do: upper and lower lids for guys. I never knew that lids was also lower. I always thought it was just uh, up um, there. Very common guys will come with bags, and they're supposed to look alert and active in the boardroom, but they look tired even if they've had a great sleep. Lower lid bags, very common. The perlin and the restylin, mm -hmm. permanent, not permanent? I don't like to do permanents because um, the, the face changes, especially a guy's nose. So an injectable like restylin or perlin for a five-minute nose job will last about a year. So guys come in once a year and get touched up. What about uh, neck lift is the next one? Neck lift is very common. Again, if it's loose skin and not fat like Albert, a little pull on the loose skin gives you that tight, Clint Eastwood, I'm an aggressive, make a decision, alpha male look to the jawline. And that's right. what guys are looking for. That, that, yeah, that does look better. And finally, uh, love handles. Ah, yeah, so the age-old love handles. The 50-year-old male <laughs> breast and the love handle. Very common. <laughs> you can diet and exercise all you want. You can't focally lose it. So this is our outer, this is equivalent to our woman's outer thigh. Hard to lose that. And so love handle lipo, especially a smart lipo where a guy can do it under local there's no risk of anesthetic really? death, and they can walk out so you see a doc you know back to work on monday do it on a friday because that looked really good that before mm -hmm. and after was was uh, just terrific when when you talk to them obviously you have a chat with them before you do the procedures mm -hmm. to find out exactly why they're doing it why are men doing it as opposed to women i mean i know women you know the panic sets in at about 40 and they're not looking as young as they used to so they like to go you know get a little nip tuck I have seen over the last decade a real transformation. I think there's a, it's multifactorial. Number one, men are doing it because we're more subject to cultural perception, perceptions of beauty and attractiveness. Right. Men are out of relationships and divorced in greater and greater numbers, and they tend to be dating and snacking in younger snack brackets, and they want to look fit to match their younger partners, and they're doing it for the boardroom, so the bedroom and the boardroom. In the boardroom, they've got all these young guys coming up with their MBAs, and they want to look definitive and 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 authoritative and if yeah. you're looking tired and saggy and droopy 
that might translate into maybe the old man's losing it type of attitude, and they want to be strong, youthful presidents in the boardroom as well. So, and, and going to the gym sometimes just doesn't crack it. Yeah, sometimes it makes you worse. You lose a little weight, your skin yeah. tone falls, and then you look toned but saggy. You look like that old guy in Santa Monica or down at the <laughs> lake shore, walking with his you know, shorts up to his chest. So. Okay, just real quick, what, what should people be aware of if they're thinking about getting some sort of cosmetic surgery? Make sure you do your homework. You know, you, the, the risks are, uh, are real, and you want to make sure you have a real surgeon doing surgery. Make sure you've got a certified facility, and make sure that you've had some discussion with your physician on the nature of risk, because there is a risk, and anyone who's not talking about risk is trying to sell you a procedure, then educate you in a process. Okay. Thanks so much for being here. It's always nice to see you. Nice I'll be talking to you again. after the show. You know what I mean?